our host today, Wutski region. We would have uh, another day of our transnational learning journey meeting with an LCA for region project. Uh, and uh, as for today, uh, before we start our uh, agenda uh, for today, uh, we would have two uh, information. The first one is an announcement uh, that uh, our learning journey meeting is within the European Sustainable Development Week. So this is the initiative uh, that is highlighting sustainability, uh, that is enabling um, uh, capacity building and uh, awareness ra uh, raising within uh, Europe and perhaps globally. And our initiative is also one of the events listed there. So congratulations for uh, for consortium and for the. Uh, Polish team as well. Uh, another point is uh, a summary of yesterday uh, meeting and presentation. And uh, for this summary, I would ask Francesco uh, to uh, briefly uh, uh, summarize yesterday events uh, for us. Francesco? Hello, good morning, and thanks for giving me the floor. I'll very quickly go through uh, yesterday key outcomes of discussions. Uh, I hope you can see the board on my screen. Please, just the positive feedback because now I'm not seeing any more your faces. Yeah, yes, we <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, so, uh, let's start with, uh, I won't focus on the um, uh, Polish uh, framework and policy plan because this will be the uh, uh, key focus of the uh, of tomorrow uh, working day. So, uh, I would rather start with the two very interest three very interesting presentation we had, uh, starting from capacity building needs on uh, for uh, LCA development to uh, uh, how academia and university and a bit the uh, some consideration on uh, how the education sector deals with evolving needs compared to uh, LCA. Uh, some key consideration that really uh, uh, struck me, uh, because especially the first presentation was very broad uh, and uh, very well referred to different level of uh, education and the skills development need. Uh, first, uh, overall consideration is about how uh, the scope of LCA is so broad that uh, requires and calls for different levels and different types of uh, skills. So. We had some unexpected skills uh, that are not usually uh, asked for uh, engineers, but they will be asked to uh, LCA expert or practitioners, like uh, some marketing skills uh, with this concept of convincing uh, uh, businesses and clients that will come back also in the third presentation as one of the main need expressed. Uh, and unexpected skills too about organizational development because LCIE processes can't go alone with a without a reflection on how organizations that are uh, uh, com uh, the, committing or uh, undergoing for LCA analysis, uh, uh, they have to go under. An unexpected key skill tree is about facilitation and negotiation, both at an internal level than an uh, an external level. At an internal level, uh, we have organization that needs to deal with uh, uh, different phases of LCA's processes. Uh, we have organization that needs to be convinced at the uh, and the committed at an external level. Uh, we have a, a multi-level of stakeholders that needs to be aligned to perform a, a good LCA analysis and processes in terms of data collection, data monitoring, and this is the link with uh, uh, the fourth uh, unexpected skill, uh, aligning interest and the views of different stakeholders is needed for strategic planning, visual thinking and prioritization. So one of the key outcome uh, uh, of uh, the, the presentation was that uh, LCA is not a, a sterile process. Uh, 
but it has a view. It needs objective and those uh, objectives uh, uh, needs to come together with uh, the sign and the side areas of the Bloom taxonomy. I liked very much those connections because uh, it is really uh, clearly applying uh, skills and processes to different phases of uh, LCA processes. Uh, so prioritization can come because LCA processes can impact different areas. And when it comes to uh, policy making, we highlighted mobility, consumption and production, agriculture and land use, uh, public sector in general. Uh, we already we had a full uh, fourth uh, transnational learning journey about the public procurement housing. Not only, this is my addition. Uh, and this is how Fritz uh, highlighted in uh, a following question. This is the outcome. LCA is not only uh, on material resource efficiency and waste prevention. We have different potential objective and impact and they have to be prioritized. And this prioritization comes to uh, links, relates to skills that are not only engineering skills or data reading skills. Even if data reading is one of the big chapter uh, highlighted yesterday. So, uh, so uh, who is providing data? And here we come again to facilitation and negotiation because we have different stakeholders and different database that have, that have to be communicate. Uh, and which are the data to be uh, read and monitored? So we have to look at products and processes. We have to look at citizens and visitors, stakeholders engagement and consumption and production data. There are levels and layers of complexity that calls also for soft skills, not only uh, data reading skills. Another interesting uh, point was about uh, uh, the continuous improvement needed to uh, perform uh, LCI, LCA approaches. So a sort of Deming cycle was uh, uh, highlighted while uh, when the uh, monitoring phase, it directly served to continuous improvement of processes, to continuous rationalization of uh, data collection and data to be read, or to continuous improvement in alignment of different stakeholders that need to uh, define objective of LCA processes. And another uh, uh, interesting area was uh, related to in this that I call them empowering individuals and organization is about how to make stakeholders responsible. Uh, this come to uh, not only to citizens and organization, this also come to businesses, especially when LCA experts needs to convince uh, businesses and private organization about benefits and the impact of uh, uh, LCA analysis. Uh, this led to uh, another interesting consideration that uh, training needs, uh, capacity building needs for LCA, they are not only addressing engineers. They, we need experts and practitioners, but we need also environmentalists and we need the citizens organization to have a, a systemic uh, improvement uh, uh, as an enabler of LCA processes. Uh, and this led us to this uh, final consideration on training needs that uh, we need LCA experts not only for uh, data monitoring and, uh, uh, and evaluation, but we need them for strategic de decision and we need them also for mobilizing stakeholders and make them count. Uh, interesting consideration answer from uh, Yesterday's speaker is uh, uh, please go come and help us make it uh, help us with informed contribution on uh, the local policy planning. Uh, another interesting point, sorry, I'm losing myself, was uh, about the uh, how academia and university are dealing with the evolving uh, needs. So it's not only about uh, uh, diversification and update of the educational offer, offer, but it's also about internal audits and looking at internal processes of uh, the universities. It's about developing a green campus and giving the example uh, uh, like public authorities with public procurement. It's about improving not only international dialogue, uh, but also local dialogue with key stakeholders. And it is about uh, uh, including transversally in all bachelor's life cycle thinking as an approach. And this leads us to the uh, another uh, interesting consideration that engineering students are need to be aware of environmental and social impact of their decisions somehow. And this led the uh, this uh, led, led us back to the beginning of the discussion, like with a, a very nice closed loop. And that's all for the introduction by my side.
I don't know if you have any question. Thank you very much, Francesco. If we have any immediate questions to the summary of yesterday, please feel free uh, to jump in. Uh, thank you for this insightful and uh, visually perfect uh, summary uh, of our previous day. Do we have any comments at hand? Uh, we will have uh, question and answer sessions uh, later today, so perhaps we will come back. Uh, thank you very much, Francesco, uh, once again yep. for a perfect summary. Uh, and now we could move uh, to the today's agenda. Uh, today's agenda uh, consists of uh, two sessions uh, presenting good practices uh, from the uh, from the region contributing to to our to our project, uh, so uh, each of the regions uh, each of the region would present uh, would present the, the good practices uh, from the different perspectives uh, as uh, for the LCA for region as a main. Yeah, as a main uh, goal of our project, uh, so this is uh, this is the agenda for today. I'm trying to find it. I think I can it right now. Uh, okay, so uh, this is general uh, agenda for today, and uh, we in the meantime we would have two breaks uh, between the presentation to discuss its. Uh, content and relevance uh, for our project and for uh, LCA uh, use. And finally, at the end, we would have uh, another good practice. This time uh, would be the presentation on life cycle thinking, thinking uh, with regard to buildings and green competences of teachers and, and students. This would be the presentation uh, of uh, our host today, namely uh, Wuchi University of uh, Technology. And uh, as uh, uh, the same as yesterday, we would finish uh, with the summary of uh, today's uh, content and uh, a brief uh, announcement of uh, the last day of our, uh, of our journey in uh, Wuchi. Uh, so let's move uh, to the presentation of presentations of uh, uh, today. Uh, we have uh, quite a tight schedule, I would say, because we have only uh, 12 minutes for each uh, presentations, each presentation. Uh, and uh, just to uh, inform you, uh, I would be calling up the presenters one by one. Uh, each of them would have uh, possibility to share the screen and the presentation uh, and a microphone to present uh, the good practice. Uh, I uh, kindly ask you not to disturb the presenter during the presentation, uh, we would have a question and answer session uh, after our first three uh, presentations and then later another form. Uh, again, uh, the session would start. Uh, we have multiple options concerning uh, this question and answer session. We could just uh, jump in and uh, turn on our microphones and just speak aloud. Uh, we could write it on the chat. We could use uh, question and answer uh, uh, functionality as well to address directly the specific uh, presenter. Uh, in my opinion, uh, we are ready to start and the first two presentations are from Spain. The first one would be presented by Sandra Alia Hurtado. Uh, she is representing Navarra region partner in our project and her presentation is on the webinars and practical courses on carbon footprint. So I give the floor to Sandra. Okay, can you see the presentation? 
Yes. Uh, uh, full screen now? Now it's perfect. Okay. So, good morning to all the attendees and thank you for joining us in this fifth life cycle event of the ACA for Region project. I am Sandra Dilia and I work for the Directorate of Environment and the Government of Navarra. And today we are going to share with you two initiatives from our employment service. So, first of all, uh, I'm going to briefly present the Navarra Employment Service. It is in charge of the planning, execution, and control of employment policies in the region. And one of its duties is the training for employment, uh, where they manage public funds to deliver uh, different courses. Seven years ago, the Navarra Employment Service started a new adventure of online courses and created a YouTube channel. But it has been during these last two or three years when they have completely taken advantage of this platform and they have uploaded the vast majority of the courses. The channel is divided in different thematics and, for example, search for employment courses, innovation, marketing, digital transformation or energetic transition. Uh, in this last section is one of the courses we are going to present. I'm focusing on the topic of the LCA for Region project, the life cycle approaches, the Navarra Employment Service have uh, funded two courses, one about carbon footprint and another about circular economy business models. So seeing the need for training that exists to promote energy efficiency and decarbonization of the different production sector, last, last year in 2020, the Navarra Employment Service and the National Reference Center in Renewable Energies and Energy Efficiency, CENIFER, organizes a cycle of webinars uh, on the topic of carbon, carbon footprint. It was for webinars, one hour each, and they are available in the YouTube channel. Uh, the first one is an, uh, an introductory seminar uh, with general concepts uh, like uh, greenhouse uh, gas emission, its problematics, international, European, and national initiative to fight against global warming, and finally, the carbon footprint concept and the standards for its calculation. The second webinar is about how to calculate the carbon footprint uh, of an organization. The third one, how to calculate the carbon footprint of a product or service. And the last one, uh, how to calculate the carbon footprint of an event. Uh, the webinars were a success, around 100 um, 1,880 visualization at the end of 2020 currently has increased to more than 2,000. And uh, last December, it was decided to expand uh, its content with a complementary practical course. Uh, they made two, uh, three sessions of two hours with real example. And it was foreseen for people who could apply this knowledge in their companies or jobs. There was a lot of interest in this practical course and a large number of people were unable to attend due, due to the limitation of participants. It was planned a, a practical course of 15 people for the first semester of 2021, but due to the big number of applicants, it was carried out two courses. Therefore, a total of 30 people were trained uh, mainly from private companies, but also some public workers uh, attended the, the practical course. Uh, the course will be held again during the second semester, or, and it will start in a few days with the same format. An offline work uh, with the visualization of the recorded webinars and three practical sessions with real examples. And uh, now, regarding the learning and transfer of this initiative, the Navarra Employment Service supports training on, in online format and the impulse of its own YouTube channel has acquired a high number of followers. The webinars have been watched by very diverse profiles. Furthermore, they have been used as training material and resources at different educational levels, and they are open to the general public interested in viewing them. Uh, the dissemination of the courses have been carried out through the channel that both the NIFER and the um, Employment Service have established, 
but additionally, uh, the Department of Environment present a budget line for the dissemination of these and other courses with the aim of raising awareness and training companies and citizens on adaptation and mitigation to, to climate change. And to sum up, uh, free open online webinars financed with public funds are an easy way to train a big number of people in any subject and a feasible initiative to transfer to, to any region. Um, this is the first initiative we want to share with you. And now Carlos Leon from Sustain Consulting is going to present a, another course that is funded uh, also by the Employment Service and organized by the Chamber of Commerce with the cooperation of, of Sustain. If I can... Uh, good, good morning, everyone. Thank you very much, Sandra, for the introduction. It's a pleasure for us to contribute to uh, to the project with our experiences. And uh, let me share the screen. Uh, can you see full screen? Yes, it's okay. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, first of all, let me introduce myself. I'm Carlos Leon, uh, Chief Innovation Officer of Sustain. Uh, this is the, we are a circular economy consulting company based in, in Spain, in Navarra, Pamplona, and um, Barcelona. Uh, today, uh, we would like to share with you a training course we made uh, last, well, uh, from November 2020 to March 2021. Uh, it was an online course about uh, the development of business model in a circular economy. Uh, there were uh, 16 sessions. The, uh, the, the course were given to 10 people with different profiles and different kind of companies and industries and sectors uh, from different kind of departments. So the main uh, goal of the course is, is to, uh, to, to give them a view uh, to how to develop uh, business models in, in circular economy uh, with some introduction, uh, the, the, let's say the trendings uh, of circular economy by sectors, uh, opportunities and trends, uh, the description of the different business model, uh, circular business model types and, um, with a special focus in uh, products as a service business model, how to outline a, business, a circular business model and finally, uh, a strategy uh, to um, to develop a roadmap from linear to circular. So, at the last part of the course that it is uh, highlighted in, in red here, uh, we were um, we, we focused on the um, life cycle and uh, sustainability uh, sustainability assessment of a life cycle of a product, uh, and and in eco design and circular design as well. So at the end, um, the, the, main, the main thing about our course there is what we introduced the concept of life cycle sustainability assessment that is, uh, let's say, a uh, step farther in, in our opinion for the life cycle assessment because it refers to the evaluation of all environmental, economic and social impact issues uh, to consider in the decision making uh, processes when when we are um, conceiving a product or, or, or a service. So it's a very key thing for the development of sustainable products and services. So at the end, this uh, methodology was published, the approach was published by the um, environmental program of the United Nations uh, back then in 2011, I think. So at the end, the idea is to combine the environmental uh, impacts analysis with the life cycle cost and the social uh, impact uh, assessment of the life cycle of a product. So uh, this is a trending uh, topic. There is a huge research activity uh, related to this. Um, there is some European projects working already uh, trying to define a reference to that because this we already have, yes, the approach, but it is very difficult to combine different magnitudes because while we are using here a different kind of environmental impacts in, in different environmental impacts category like uh, um, CO2 emissions or um, acid, acidification uh, or consumption of the different uh, natural resources. And here we are talking about money. We are talking about different cost of raw materials, manufacturing processes, operation and maintenance. 
uh, it's we are evaluating the cumulative cost of a product in the whole life cycle. So from the conception to the end of life ma management or the dismantling, and in the social life cycle assessment, we consider the impact that the product have in different social categories. Uh, so at the end, we are trying to 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 measure the impact that the product has uh, uh, throughout the, the life cycle in the different st stakeholders all along uh, the life cycle, workers, local communities, consumer, the society itself. So uh, we already know uh, which are the data we need to, to perform a life cycle assessment, like the materials consume, uh, use, the water consumption, the emissions generated, the energy consumption. For the life cycle cost assessment, of course, we are going to evaluate or to measure and calculate the cost of the raw materials, the manufacturing process, the consumption of different resources like energy, water, the operation and maintenance cost, and of course, the end of life management cost. And for the de data needed for the social uh, life cycle assessment, there, 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 there is, the, the, there are some guidelines published by the environmental program of the United Nations, defining the different kind of uh, categories. And within any of these categories, there are some indicators. So at the end, uh, we have to define methodologies to combine these, all these three dimensions indicators, because at the end we are, we are combining uh, different magnitudes. So the main thing uh, we um, um, explain in the course is like, uh, okay, this, this could be used for measuring, uh, so at, at the time that after designing and developing a product, like a accountability, like something like this, but the, the most important thing is to consider this and to develop some tools, some methodologies to include this as a, a decision making a tool uh, at the time when you are conceiving a product. So uh, with this, you can select the optimal technical solution of the product com considering the three dimensions. Right now, there is no uh, recognized reference in the world to measure this. Um, we are working uh, to include this uh, in a European project that is called OceanWise. Uh, it's trying to reduce uh, expanded pre-steer and marine litter in the Northeast Atlantic. And we are developing a method for performing a security assessment of the, of the EPS product life cycle. And we are including this approach of a life cycle sustainability assessment because security has to be sustainable. So no matter we um, promote a different kind of recirculations, but we we have to ensure that the three dimensions are measured. And of course, we have to consider the environmental impacts when we are thinking about measuring the security of a, a product life cycle. Um, yeah, thank you very much. Uh, it was just a everything and trying to uh, contribute with this uh, approach of the life cycle sustainability assessment. Thank, uh, you. thank you very much for a very interesting and meaningful presentation for our topic today. Uh, we are still not uh, posing any questions at the moment uh, because we have one more presentation be before Q&A session. Uh, so thank you again uh, we will get back to your presentation soon and now uh, i would like to ask uh, professor yolanta uh, from kaunas university of technology uh, to present uh, her uh, topic on using a life cycle assessment as a tool for learning and research at uh, her home university uh, so please, uh, uh, the floor is yours. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Andrzej. Can you hear me? Uh, yes, we can hear you. We can see the presentation as well. Okay, and uh, you can hear properly? Uh, everything is fine. Oh, everything is fine. Okay, let's try. I, I begin. Thank you for the introduction. Um, and today we have a really very nice event to share and to hear from each other, from partners about capacity building on life cycle assessment. So, as, as you know, as you noticed, and uh, as was presented, I'm uh, presenting Konas University of Technology and actually Institute of Environmental Engineering. And uh, 
I would say that uh, we, uh, our institute started our activities. Uh, university was established as you see in 1922, and we will celebrate um, 100 years university next uh, year. In our institute, um, environmental engineering was established 30 years ago, and we the first, and we were the first institution in our country. Um, dealing with environmental problems or issues or we um, we decided to with our partners from scandinavian countries for from west european countries to try to solve problems that we had uh, or in our country so and um, what i wanted to say that uh, from this long period we started uh, with the programs on cleaner production from 1995, uh, we we had the chance to educate or to uh, to invite many uh, producers, industrial comp companies from different from various branches of um, uh, economic um, economic branches, textile, leather, and furs. Uh, food, uh, construction, metal processing, and they were. Uh, trained on cleaner production um, methods, different uh, different different methods and um, resource efficiency. And I would say that that time, uh, even 25 years ago, we started to talk very 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 little about the life cycle assessment or eco design aspect. But this is was like from historical point of view, and not uh, very concrete. But I will. Uh, talk a little bit uh, university as well. Uh, as you know, uh, our university is one of the biggest universities in the Baltic states, and uh, now we have not uh, much students. It's approximately ten thousand, but still, I would say that um, our university took very good um, uh, direction, becoming one of the most important for. Uh, or significant center for for industry, for science and uh, education, to be the intermediate between the policymakers uh, and our all research works uh, very connected with the industrial companies. And uh, nowadays, many many contracts agreements are signed between the companies, with, between national institutions, policymakers. And we cooperate with them. And of course, our students after graduation, they they try to they become the uh, the part of uh, of those institutions of of those companies. So, and I would like to say that in 2016, the idea of Green University came from our institute, uh, from Institute of Environmental Engineering, where. Uh, graduated masters and doctoral degree students, they had a moral obligation to support um, to support sustainable development, to foster sustainable development at at university, and uh, and actually the mission of university is uh, education, and therefore the dissemination of knowledge obliged the university community to act responsibly, without contradicting the actions of theoretical knowledge. That are disseminated to students. It is for the reason that Purdue Green University play an important role in demonstrating the responsible attitude of the university and its community to the environment. And there were a lot of different initiatives, and I would like not to to uh, to talk more about those initiatives. But we started with a waste. Uh, collection or sorting uh, with the establishment of the system at the university, with the establishment of a uh, um, digital documentation system to avoid the uh, use of paper, and many, many other things were spread not only, and ideas were spread not only at the university, but also to the wider community to uh, in the country, and not only in the country, but we also uh, have a lot of um, uh, international projects, uh, international ideas, and, and, and we share those um, 
received new ideas or uh, practices with our uh, stakeholders or our contacts. So I'm not going to talk about the life cycle assessment as such. We all our project is dedicated for life cycle assessment uh, to spread or to disseminate or to try to motivate our, especially our regional or national authorities, policy makers to use life cycle assessment. And we know from, uh, from our partners, from our colleagues that uh, in other countries and to just uh, in Spain, I was uh, very happy to listen how you, your um, um, authorities the, or, okay, the, the part of, um, of government, uh, uh, they integrated uh, into professional learning the LC aspects or LC methodologies. So, of course, um, Lithuania, one uh, of those countries, as we are European Union country, and those Green Deal or Circular Economy, Clean Mobility, New Renovation Wave, uh, all these documents are in our in our. Um, different um, strategies, national strategies, long-term, short-term strategies in incorporated, but still as a scientist, as a representative from university, I see that they lack, they lack um, not information, but I would say that um, maybe motivation to use or to maybe resources to use, as we know, uh, there are challenges uh, for to use the life cycle assessment, especially not only for environmental impact assessment, also for social, for for economic assessment, for sustainability assessment, or taking uh, taking into account all the uh, aspects. So, and of course, we lack still lack expertise and the national um, maybe centers or initiatives uh, because. Uh, because this is like uh, if 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 we have in, in in legislation incorporated, it means that companies or um, um, private or or even um, companies um, governmental companies they have to use. Uh, but if still this just a recommendation, we still have a challenge to motivate uh, responsible. Um, uh, authorities or competent authorities to use uh, life cycle assessment. Uh, and to, uh, I, I would like just to try to explain a little bit about the Lithuanian's policy landscape, how they decided to, to use this mobilize, educate, manage, initiative, and regulate all these um, uh, policies. And we, we see that uh, all these topics are covered and uh, and even to educate uh, to have campaigns or or European uh, uh, to participate in the European waste reduction weeks or different uh, programs and actions but but still if you go deeply into into those documents you will see that no exact uh, mentioning about the life cycle assessment uh, methodologies or tools used Several we have, of course, I, I would say that about the um, environmental product declarations or or um, green uh, uh, green uh, products uh, uh, certification, but not exactly for many um, actions or taking decisions in, in the companies. So uh, we know that uh, and we understand that. Um, for the circular economy, life cycle assessment is one of the best, uh, or this is like strategic uh, tool, a strategic methodology, and we uh, we understand that this could be helped. And what I want to um, to uh, start to explain how Konas University of Technology. Um, started, as I mentioned before, 25 years ago, incorporating into different programs or into different um, uh, modules, study modules uh, of the programs, life cycle approach and life cycle thinking. But uh, still we have uh, at university just a uh, few programs, um, PhD programs and uh, master programs with the uh, um, 
uh, six credits uh, modules dedicated for eco design, life cycle assessment, and uh, or sustainable development. But uh, it is good. I, I would say that uh, we have at university obligatory module sustainable develop development for all bachelor students and today of course uh, uh, several hours have uh, about the life cycle assessment or eco design and they um, just get a knowledge and about what what it is but not deep understanding of of the methodology and of course as i uh, said before uh, we have um, sustainable consumption and production master program and uh, environmental engineering phd program and of course uh, uh, those two programs we have lc course lectures exercises different practical works and uh, we suggest for students not only theoretical understanding of uh, the life cycle assessment but we always um, suggest or we uh, as we have a um, very huge network uh, cooperation with the uh, different companies we ask um, students to make uh, for them uh, to assess the products or processes or sometimes uh, um, economic or social aspects of uh, using the life cycle approach or life cycle uh, assessment uh, with different softwares so uh, aim of this proposed model of course to provide the knowledge about the life cycle assessment and as i said before not only analyzing the environmental impacts but also social and economic we know that nowadays uh, we should talk not only about environmental issues but also about sustainability all three aspects should be taken into account and of course this model is designed to get acquainted with a and analyze in detail the life cycle methodology to reveal the advantages and disadvantages of the application of the method and to provide the necessary competencies for the experts which are willing to make LC, which can take be used, then be used both in industry or in institutional decision making. And I would say that most important thing that or benefits to public sector is that those our students. Uh, they are working in different agencies, national authorities, Ministry of uh, Environment, Transport, F Economy and Innovation, and uh, uh, those uh, not um, very uh, huge amount or big amount of uh, of um, of um, uh, trained, uh, I would say, it, uh, students, uh, but but still some uh, some. Um, uh, already expertise they have and they can try to uh, work in, in the institutions um, with the knowledge about LCA and LCA benefits. So, and of course, we university, they have not only those uh, models, as I have mentioned, for different programs, two programs, but of course we do the, uh, we have number of research projects national and international projects and uh, as i have presented um, yearly in different in our tlgs that we uh, made uh, lca or life cycle assessment not only environmental uh, life cycle assessment also some aspects were also made for social and uh, economic for uh, PC uh, photovoltaics for electric mobility for construction for industrial companies especially for substitution of hazardous substances to evaluate the impacts so and there are different slides uh, about the results I'm not going to to go very deeply but uh, some of them I would like to mention that for example life cycle environmental and cost comparison of electric hybrid and conventional vehicles a case study was done uh, taking into account the mix or uh, of energy in Lithuania or electricity production uh, starting uh, from two, uh, 2015 until 2050 and uh, we know that um, uh, our our um, production will change from uh, from uh, gas or or uh, 
those uh, uh, not so uh, positive from an environment point of view sources of energy to um, renewable and renewables and we expect that uh, in 2050 we will have uh, mostly the renewables and how the how environmental um, impact will change from the life cycle perspective when we will use electricity for different cars and of course we hope that we will use most uh, the electric cars in the future so and of course uh, another uh, research project was done on comparison of end of life vehicles and cost uh, different uh, different vehicles uh, with the life cycle approach how the cost could be cost comparison of um, in the uh, from the perspective 2015 and 2050 and I have mentioned that uh, environmental impact assessment with the life cycle assessment was done for residential building for renovation and we know that uh, these uh, this very important, especially in our country when we have to renovate more than 30,000 of uh, multi apartment buildings and uh, uh, how to use the materials or which materials or technology would would be better for citizens for from economic from environmental point of view and uh, and of course this is very huge challenge and the results were discussed and presented to our regional and uh, national authorities so and finally i would like to share with you that uh, conus uh, next year will have the contemporary capital european capital of culture and invite you it is really um, very huge uh, big uh, uh, event and we are very proud that conus were selected for for this um, for this event for, for the european capital of culture so thank you very much for your attention and i'm really happy to answer questions if we if we have some uh, thank you very much uh, as well for presenting uh, this uh, academic uh, perspective and involvement in uh, life cycle assessments and uh, now we have the first uh, question and answer session. I propose to start with the presentation of Carlos Leon from Spain, who is uh, leaving us quite soon. So if you have uh, any questions, please uh, ask them. You can do it, uh, just speak them out or write them uh, on the chat. Uh, just uh, do we have uh, and uh, and uh, calls for the moment uh, so i would start if you don't mind the question is uh, for uh, carlos as i mentioned to start with it uh, do you assist companies with their life cycle sustainability assessment those uh, companies uh, who are participating in uh, uh, these courses uh, do you assist them or just present uh, uh, methodology and uh, teach the methodology itself? Thank you very much for your question, Andre. Uh, yeah, we uh, previously to the course, uh, we made a pilot project uh, funded by Navarra's government as well. We were uh, working with uh, five companies in Navarra um <clears throat> trying to introduce and to validate the methodology so we made uh, uh, four or five projects and well it was uh, very interesting because uh, some of them they're aware of the life cycle assessment uh, thing from the environmental side mainly the, the the big ones the big companies and others they they have heard something about life cycle assessment but they didn't hear uh, anything about life cycle sustainability assessment. So the, our experience is like, uh, is there, it's uh, sometimes it's very difficult to have the enough data or the kind of data needed to perform this, uh, the, this assessment. So we can have some data for their, uh, operational activities. They, they manage, for example, if someone is manufacturing a, a washing machine or a fridge, they have a lot of data about the manufacturing process and their materials and um, resources they are consuming. 
uh, but for the small and medium companies, it's very difficult for them to have the data. So the first thing to know is which kind of data they need to perform this kind of assessment. They found uh, so interesting the combination of the three dimensions, and some of them are using it to, uh, let's say, to promote their sustainability practices and and use it uh, more properly uh, uh, for communication purposes. Uh, so yeah, and, and from that from that time, uh, we are usually doing this kind of projects. So companies right now are interested more separately about doing a, a environmental assessment of, of the life cycle and they are doing some things for the social part but most related to organization impacts not so related to a product uh, uh, life cycle itself thank you very much for your response uh, i think we have a question from uh, professor yolanda barianiana mm -hmm. uh, yes am i right thank you angie thank you and i would like to ask Carlos Leon, if uh, these training courses are available in um, English or just we have in Spanish. And uh, I would like to share this your example with our authority. And of course, we need to present to them. And um, most of our uh, residents, they speak English, international language or German, but not Spanish, maybe some few people they understand, but not all. So my question yeah. is, is it possible to get information in English on, on this program, how it's built or how you run it? Or this is just a <laughs> private uh, business and, and, you, and, and how to use this practice? Uh, we could use yeah, this yeah. for our authority. Uh, yeah, we, we can, we have done uh, a small course that's very focused on the life cycle. The, the course I presented was a, a, a full, let's say, approach about uh, building a circular uh, business models, but uh, we have done for specific companies ad hoc uh, training courses for life cycle assessment and life cycle sustainability assessment, and we have uh, participated in, in some international events, uh, giving some small trainings and short trainings about this. So yes, uh, it, it's a possibility and we are open to collaborate for, let's say, promoting this. Yes, of course. So thank you very much. At your disposal for anything you need. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, we have another raised hand, this time from Fritz Balkow. Please. Uh, also, my question to Carlos. Uh, It's really happening and uh, it was very interesting. Things like that are being sponsored by chamber industry, for example. Although I can see that the benefits to industry are having such people are available. But my question really is that the trainees who have come through this course have been trained on various forms and methodologies of life cycle assessment. Are you following their future? Are they being employed? How are they using their skills? Are they being promoted with their new skills? What is what is the human outcome of the course in terms of career opportunities and real applications? How are you following them? Yeah, uh, with uh, the trainees, uh, we we from from the course and uh, with some of them we started some let's say commercial relationships and, and they are using the concepts uh, more or less some of them in their uh, companies and for some of them we are uh, working with them trying to implement this in their companies but uh, by now it's they are they are seeing this like a a thing to be at our shares uh, so. They, they are more focused on the on the core activities of the companies and uh, they are they are learning step by step but they, they don't have uh, by now uh, specific training programs to to let's say to build these capabilities and these skills so it's more or less my sensation with uh, uh, all the private companies we are working on in this uh, regard yeah that's first steps really isn't it yeah, yeah, it's a, a huge room for improvement. Uh, I think we need a lot of uh, efforts to promote these concepts and to try to introduce it in the 
in in the organization and most importantly uh, in my opinion is try to to reach the, the people or designers or engineers or, or people uh, related to the design and development of products and services to try to integrate these skills in their normal skills and uh, usual skills to develop products and services from the beginning because uh, if you are integrating this in the conceptual uh, design stages of, of, a, of a product I think it's uh, you can avoid a lot of environmental inputs and, and you can create at, at the end idea ideally a positive impact in the society so yeah this is this is the point we have to reach and uh, we have a, a long path to to walk thank you thank you very much uh, as well uh, do we have some more questions on the previous presentations of today uh, if yes, uh, please uh, write them on the chat or within a Q&A module of our uh, conference. Uh, if uh, we don't have any prompt question for the moment, uh, I would start uh, the next part of the presentation. So thank you once again for all the presenters uh, for the first session. Clap your hands for them uh, as well. Thank you very much. And now we move uh, to the second part. Uh, we would start uh, with uh, Pekka Mayela uh, from Pekhayaravi Institute from Satakunta, Finland. And the presentation would be on the Kano Academy for Sustainable Procurement Management. My name is Pekka Majala. I'm from Pyhäjärvi Institute, <coughs> one of the partners in the project. And uh, today, this good practice presentation is about Kano Academy. <coughs> and uh, many of you are listening to the previous uh, transnational learning journey uh, where, where, where we were talking about public procurements and, and, and we had a presentation of Katrina Alhola there um, <clears throat> about Kena platform. Uh, Kena Academy is, is kind of a, uh, within this platform and uh, I will present some details uh, about this because I think this quite nicely um, I think that it has a good very uh, big impact on the sustainable management uh, development in in public organizations and uh, it's a good example for this Let's see did you did you change can you see the next slide yes yes okay good so first of all i i i tell some some uh general uh <clears throat> structure of the kano and then then i will uh, explain later a little bit about the, the academy itself and and the working strategy so uh this kind of competence center for sustainable and innovative public procurement is, 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 is established uh, a few years ago, 2018, and it's a network of different uh, organizations. And the owner of this good practice, what I'm talking about, is, is Puntaleto, the Association of Finnish Local and Regional Authorities. Uh, but it uh, operates uh, Practical operations are, are mainly based on, on Motiva work, and then there are additional organizations involved in the system, VTT, Finnish Environment Institute, uh, Business Finland, uh, and Hansel. And uh, this structure enables a very wide uh, provision of expertise in different areas of, of sorry sorry uh, 
in general, uh, this platform promotes sustainable and innovative public procurement in Finland, and uh, it seeks to increase uh, awareness of strategic procurement management and impact thinking. And uh, and this good practice, especially, is 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 uh, is meant for the upper management level of public uh, organizations like municipalities so it's um it's kind of provides management tool tools and management tool development and measurement and <clears throat> so uh, so it provides development of procurement competence through advisory services, events, and aerial gain or agent activities throughout Finland. And, uh, and in additionally, it will strengthen the also international networks and peer-to-peer -peer learning for procurers. So, so uh, it's a whole package uh, related to public procurement. Now, what we have learned so far here, uh, I will explain briefly about this. So, so the, and the goal, we have several now cases uh, that, that are good examples in a way in Finland. Almost a hundred different cases available, what we have analyzed. And uh, this academy, is involved in the change of mindset in these organizations uh, towards more sustainable uh, approaches uh, in at the procurement sector and uh, it really has we have learned that uh, there exists nowadays uh, the market dialogue which is important and we have learned that innovative solutions, innovative procurements is a result of research and development and piloting. And this type of piloting work is now encouraged in the you know, academic practices as well. And an important aspect in this regard is that, uh, that the, the, the academic uh, uh, emphasizes that we take into account the life cycle impacts of procurement. And uh, because this, <coughs> like municipalities, they do have a strategic, uh, municipal strategies uh, written, but in many cases, uh, these are lacking maybe tools uh, how to how to implement uh, uh, strategic ideas and goals into practice, and now through this academy actions, also the life cycle impacts of procurements are are now in focus, and are, they are better taken care of, and and it goes along the uh, strategic goals. And and also the monitoring the, of the results and 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 development. It's continuous the process, and uh, Gaino platform follows the progress all the time and acts as a helping hand in this process. There are challenges. <clears throat> in general, we know that. Uh, Many public authorities, they, they, they have the lack of know-how on procurement. They fear the risks and mistake in the public tendering process. There might be insufficient knowledge of the suppliers and market possibilities for new solutions. And, and many organizations find difficulties in, in to integrate existing solutions to new solutions and, and the also lack of resources so these are the these are the 
um, points that have been have been noticing. So, and and Kano Academy was not in the beginning uh, within the system whole platform. It started 2019, and now this fall is starting the third semester. Now, how to how does this works? So that the the organizations are selected. They, 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 they want to participate in the development program and they are interviewed in the two phase uh, search process and, and the applications are, are, are set and the interviews are done and, and then the organization is, is chosen along. Uh, I, I don't go into details what are what are the uh, kinds of things uh, are are required, but uh, I think that the, there must be this the strategic uh, goals clearly uh, existing and and what they want to do and the motivation, of course, because uh, it it this requires participation uh, from the of the organization. Now, um, what the academy provides, there are guides and tools. There are developed new electric tools for acquisition action. Uh, and they are offered into the pilot use um, in the, then for the organizations. The, I have listed here them, they are Hankinta Pulsi. Uh, which is a reporting tool of acquisition costs. It's based on quest questionnaires, and and this tool improves the view in the public acquisitions and facilitates management of them with the help of accumulating information. It's a so um, the good point here is that uh, they are they are handily available for for persons and. It's so kind of a one service action and, um, and it provides some monthly follow-up uh, uh, costs and, uh, and there, are, there are many indicators uh, present here and, uh, and the indicators that describe the environmental responsibility, but Additionally, there are views into the economical and social responsibility of, of the uh, joint purchase, purchases, and this, it, I, I think it's a, it's a nice nice way to increase the awareness of of the purchase. Then there is uh, two other tools. Ankinta Tutka is a kind of an inquiry tool and reporting tool. It's been developed for the uh, to analyze the maturity of the acquisition action. It's a kind of comparative uh, comparative tool that has different uh, systems. And then there is this kind of Hankin Taluotsi, the third tool, which is uh, for uh, helps the this kind of. Uh, strategic acquisitions uh, with the participatory planning so that uh, also this is a tool that uh, helps to to monitor and and to participate to to get so to try in the in the pro in this um, procurement processes so that also the common citizens and different actors of the municipality may take part in the process and, and analysis, analysis uh, this type of dissemination of, of uh, and participation, participationally activities. So uh, I will explain briefly now. Uh, this is kind of a, of course, this academy is under development process all the time. Now it's the third semester. First two semesters. Uh, they were focusing on the that that organizations chose a developing task which is suitable for itself uh, 
and uh, I gave an example in my previous uh, public procurement good practice. There was the city city of Pori example that it was kind of a developing task for uh, management process, developing the, the general uh, management process. Now this this ongoing semester, <coughs> the organizations. Uh, will establish uh, a development plan uh, to its uh, acquisition action. It could be a, a roadmap or uh, yeah, or, or similar approach. And it's maybe for the next five years. And, uh, and there, there is, uh, in, within the semester program, there is this impact management modules include it's, uh, it's, there is innovations module, social responsibility module, and low carbon policy and circulation economy modules in, included. And uh, <clears throat> and pra in practice, uh, it requires some self studying. Now at this, this season, they uh, they do some other development related tasks uh, individually. And, and then they have this uh, online online uh, meetings or or for development periods, so so called sprints, uh, where the this there is a shared knowledge, uh, and 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 there are ex experts uh, that uh, are are running those sprints. So it's a skill development. You get you will get peer support and exchange of thoughts in uh, in in this in this, uh, this participating meetings and uh, and and everybody gets support this way on the this on the on the their own developing trips and additionally then the then the idea is that. Uh, it's it's arranged within normal working hours, so public authorities must have the uh, capability to to join these and and take take this time. Then there's uh, then afterwards some workshop based duties in in the own organization and all this all this uh, all this is aiming at the the advance. To advance the strat strategic management of an acquisition action, so uh, and and so far, uh, so far uh, since the starting of the academy, about fifty public organizations and municipalities have have utilized this education and and networking services. Now, if you think about the impact uh, Finland has uh, 2,800 public organizations, so and and they all could take part in this. Now this is of course a very uh, small amount so far, but uh, we know that uh, the impact already has been significant. So uh, that the uh, they are big cities that have. So far, taking part in the uh, in this <coughs> academy, and and these strategies are are clearly uh, developing into the uh, practical actions, which which are supporting much better the sustainability goals, which are indicated in their own uh, strategies. Uh, there is some statistics which I'm not going this, but it has, <coughs> yeah. So, so this is this is what I had to tell, and I'm uh, happy to answer questions. Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, now we would uh, smoothly go to the next one, but the question and answer uh, session would be later. And uh, using a chat, we could have ongoing question and answer session. So please consider uh, chat or Q and A model 
for uh, presenting your question as well. Thank you very much again. And uh, now I would like to ask Elsa Pereira Nunez from Portugal, uh, representing Bajo Alentejo uh, uh, regions, uh, uh, and yes. presenting. And I, present yes, I kindly ask you to give me the permission to share my screen. Uh, yes, uh, uh, we are doing it right now. Okay. And uh, uh, your presentation is on e-learning course on construction and yes. demolition waste. Uh, uh, so please, the floor is yours. I'm um, Elsa Freire Nunes. I'm uh, today presenting in behalf of Simbal. Uh, for those of you that do not know it yet, <clears throat> Simbal is uh, an association of municipalities in Alentejo region, namely in Baixo Alentejo. Baixo Alentejo means, uh, the word Baixo means the lower part of Alentejo, which is a region in Portugal, and Simbal aggregates 13 uh, municipalities uh, within this territory and has uh, the responsibility, among many others, of contributing to the planning and management of economic, social, and the environmental development of the territory. And so this, um, this uh, initiative comes in that direction. So it is about an online course, an e-learning course, um, that is focusing on construction and demolition waste. <clears throat> I kindly ask you to move to the next slide, please. Um, the, this, uh, this online course it comes, uh, comes in the context of a wider project that is calling Deconstruct for Circular Economy. So, as you can see, uh, it is within this uh, circular economy paradigm and this tra transition. And it aims to promote a regional strategy for the reuse of construction products and components components, as well as the recycling of construction and demolition waste, thus reducing the environmental impact of this activity of construction and promoting the circularity in this uh, sector. Uh, this project, whose, part, whose promoter is Simbal, has partners from not only Portugal, but Romania, Norway, and the Czech Republic. So this e-learning course, um, sorry, my dog wants to participate also in the presentation. Okay, you can switch the slide, please. Thank you. And this uh, e-learning course was, of course, organized under the Deconstruct for Circular Economy project, and it aims at promoting education and awareness actions targeting the various agents that are along this construction and demolition waste associated chain, supporting their interaction in order to promote a more sustainable value chain organization in line, of course, with the principles of circular economy and propose promoting the transition to the circular economy. Uh, this online course covered the CIMBAL's 13 associated municipalities. And so uh, within the context and within the scope of CIMBAL's activity, it was a very meaningful initiative. This target audience were mainly the municipal experts and other regional entities that developed their activities in the field of construction and demolition waste. It took, uh, it, it, had, it had a duration of four weeks and it was composed of four learning modules. Uh, it was so uh, organized in phases and in the future, and this is for us very meaningful, this type of course will integrate life cycle assessment thus providing additional environmental and resource efficiency value and thus also providing the uh, 
the targeted audiences with additional and meaningful tools in this uh, in this field. Uh, so to go now to the key success factors that were analyzed, there were 69 trainees in this first edition, which, which is for us very uh, important. Trainees were encouraged to promote a more sustainable value chain organization in line with circular economy principles. So we believe that uh, besides these 69 trainees, there is this uh, uh, possibility of their uh, transferability among other agents. And due to this success, a new edition is being considered, namely since uh, legislation in these areas is changing. And uh, as I told before, this course will be updated in order to integrate further tools, namely in, in, in order to integrate life cycle tools. The main challenges and the possibilities for transferability. <clears throat> challenges are, uh, and also not only challenges, but also opportunities, changes in legislation. And of course, uh, something that is necessary to be uh, taken upon consideration always is resources that are necessary, namely in what regards uh, communication. Of course, that now everything being online, it's a little uh, more easy. In what regards transferability, this type of training actions can benefit from a life cycle analysis, like I told. Presenting, presenting a structure based upon an efficient use of resources, contributing to accelerate the transition to circular e economy, and in line with the principles of this new economy paradigm. This uh, good practice, um, as we see it, is applicable in every country and region facing uh, problems that are related to construction and demolition waste. And this project that I was mentioning, the Deconstruct for Circular Economy project, is uncovering that this is an issue in several uh, uh, countries. And so this was the presentation about our online course. I would like to thank you all and, uh, of course, to make available for any question that you wish to uh, find an answer to. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you very much. I hope I did a good job uh, while follow, following the pace of your presentation. It was perfect. Thank you. And sorry for this technical problem. Thank you. Thank you again. Uh, and now we immediately come to the next presenter. Uh, the next uh, presenter uh, is from Lombardy, Professor Daniel Damario. Uh, representing uh, the Department of Food Science and Technology for a Sustainable Agri-Food Chain from Università Cattolica del Sacro Cuore from Piacenza. And the title of the presentation is uh, on Viticulture Impact Assessment on the Environment. Uh, so please, uh, the floor is yours. Uh, good morning, everyone. And uh, I would like, first of all, uh, to thank the organizer of this meeting for inviting me for, uh, for inviting me here today. And today I will I will provide information about what we do about life cycle assessment um, in uh, our program. Our program is called uh, Viva. Is Viva program and. Uh, uh, the projects represent a starting point for a systematic in integration of sustainability in wineries to design new strategy and identify uh, new opportunities. Uh, this project uh, born, uh, born from the idea of uh, the Ministry of Ecological Transition of uh, the Italian Ministry of Ecological Transition and uh, started in 2011 and uh, like uh, as a a pilot that uh, that uh, uh, was involved like for four years. After 2014, uh, we uh, um, extend our our borders to all the all the farmers in Italy, 
and uh, the objective of the of the program is the calculation of products footprint and companies and companies environmental social and economic impact as the triple triple uh, bottom approach uh, described and uh, in order to support by capacity building initiative on sustainability in the sub sub supply chain as i as i said uh, before as i mentioned before viva started in 2011 and uh, the objective is to measure and improve the wine wine chain sustainability performance and uh, from um, the scientific uh, point of view two research centers have been involved since the start uh, our university and University of Turin and uh, nine uh, pilot wineries have been uh, selected in order to enhance in uh, the performance of the of the wine change as a standing point. Uh, right now, more than 80 new wineries uh, join Viva, join Viva program and more than uh, 60,000 uh, hectares of, uh, of vineyards have been uh, have been certified as sustainable. Uh, no, wait, I'm going, okay. Viva is based on four indicators, air, water, vineyard and territory. And uh, basically as, uh, as life cycle approach uh, described, uh, mentioned, uh, it's like a from cradle to grave approach. We, uh, uh, we decide to, to, to carry on with this kind of approach. So there is the agricultural uh, phase stage, that is the field. The production phase, the distribution phase, consumption and disposal, that is the last one. Uh, air indicator is based uh, on the on different ISO and basically the ISO of life cycle, the life, uh, the ISO about uh, also the product footprint and the last one is the ISO about uh, the organization footprint. Uh, the water indicator is based on the last uh, ISO that is available, so ISO of 14,046. And uh, instead, vineyard and territory are two other different indicators. That the vineyard is, some, is something that we uh, developed uh, in this program. That is a fuzzy logic uh, uh, program, basically, that is based on the directive of the, of, uh, the European Commission. Uh, the um, 128 and the last one is territory that is basically based on uh, on requirements so in order to be accomplished uh, one, uh, one one winery basically needs to um, to be approved by each requirement the requirements are 29 and are based on like uh, like I said before about ISO, ISO in this case uh, uh, 26,000 uh, ISO and other kind of uh, guidelines. Um, the main uh, the main uh, part of our program is about the training program. The training program is uh, is for us so in uh, so important because can give you the opportunity to promote uh, educational awareness through different perspectives. So we give, for example, courses that are uh, taught uh, in Italian because basically it's a, it's a program that based in, is in Italy and uh, are taught in Italian and as is physical. Uh, but now, thanks to this, uh, thanks uh, to this, this, this uh, magical uh, situation, uh, sanit uh, sanitary situation, we are only told uh, in distance. So we are doing webinars or we are doing like uh, classes online uh, uh, through different kind of uh, applications uh, like uh, Skype, like Microsoft Teams. And uh, the course is every six months to contribute to farms uh, knows our improvement and create new growth job opportunities. Because after the course, uh, we uh, invite uh, the, um, the student, uh, the, the trainer, basically to to, to insert in a, in a list about uh, the people that uh, is right now has got like a, can be described as a, an operator of sustainability. So after this, uh, every single farm basically can go in this web page and can select the, uh, the different consultant. And then there are also the a learning platform that instead is open 24 hours per 24 hours, seven days per seven days. It basically uh, gives like a little um, a, a little intro, introduction about uh, about what is does it mean sustainability and what we do basically in order to um, in, in order to measure the sustainability performance. Uh, 
the, in basically, uh, the courses, the physical courses are uh, both theoretical lessons and, and um, practical workshop and are on the four different indicators and providing participants information to receive VIVA certification and uh, also give the opportunity to give uh, what does it mean life cycle assessment, what does it mean life cycle approach, and in order to, first of all, to collect the data, then evaluate the study, understand the strength and weakness of, the, of this tool, and provide knowledge and methodology of performance and complete LCA to, to all the winners participating in uh, this program. Here I only, um, I can, you can see some, some photos that, uh, about uh, the, the last uh, courses that uh, we, uh, we have provided. And uh, today is the last day for, uh, for, for uh, also for joining the last uh, um, course uh, the, of, uh, of our operator of sustainability in vitamin culture. And uh, as I mentioned, is, uh, is uh, uh, once again is uh, through the Microsoft Teams platform, and will be uh, will be held from 12 of, uh, um, of October till 15. And as I mentioned before, is the last day for inscription. Inscription. So all the information you can find also in our website. So it is written here. And um, let's come back to, 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 to our program and some useful information. Of course, our, uh, our program is not based on about something that we are talking just for, just, just for enjoying our days, but it's basically based on um, something that uh, is uh, validated uh, through scientific papers that give us the possibility to, 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 to say that uh, our methodology is, is unique and in the, at the same time has been validated by uh, by scientific uh, by scientific uh, academia. So we also wrote a, a huge number of scientific papers. Uh, most of them are published uh, in uh, uh, on, the, on the journal of science of total uh, environment, and someone else also in uh, journal of cleanup production. And uh, this kind of paper, as I mentioned before, can give us the possibility to first of all to validate our methodology, and secondly also to provide information about. Uh, all the results that uh, have been achieved uh, uh, have been achieved uh, in uh, in our in our program. Uh, from uh, the perspective of the website, we have got the website uh, as I mentioned before, and um, the main important things that I wanted to to mention uh, before to to come to the end is that. Uh, after that uh, one winner analyze uh, their impacts, uh, they, after two years, they need to, if they want to carry on the program, to, to, to join the program, they need to provide uh, information about uh, some critical areas that have been fixed, that have been analyzed, such as just, just, for, just for instance, like uh, the bottle, the bottle weight. So if mm, the bottle weight is about 600 grams and 600 grams is a huge amount uh, of, uh, of, uh, um, of value no? for, uh, for, for, weight, for the weight, basically we prescribed, uh, in, in, with the winneries, we prescribed to reduce this, uh, the, this weight uh, and they need to, the winner needs to give us uh, documents uh, describing which kind of adoption, which kind of uh, practice have been adopted in order to reduce their impacts through the different four indicators. So this is mandatory in order to carry on with, uh, to, to, to carry on in the VIVA program for all the winners that are participating. And thank you for for the attention. If there are some questions, uh, I will be happy to to answer them. Uh, thank you very much as well uh, for a brief uh, but meaningful presentation. Uh, we are still uh, before the Q and A session. Uh, now we have the last presenter okay. of this section, uh, which is uh, Alvin Pintar from Western Slovenia region in Slovenia, of course representing the Department of Inorganic Chemistry and Technology uh, from National Institute of Chemistry uh, in uh, Ljubljana. Uh, and the uh, presentation would be on training and cap capacity building on LCA in Slovenia. As it was said, I will talk today about the training and capacity building on LCA in, uh, in Slovenia. And 
in detail, uh, this presentation will be devoted to two examples of good practices uh, on LSA training and capacity building. And with, with this, I mean the presentation of two expert workshops that have been that were recently organized in the country. The first one was entitled Introducing Circular Changes in the Economy Through Product Lifecycle Analysis. And the second one, which was uh, organized this year, was entitled Process Planning and Multi-Criteria Decision-Making in a Circular Economy. So let's focus now, first of all, on the, uh, on, uh, on the first uh, expert workshop. So, uh, the participants, uh, uh, the participants of this workshop uh, were able, first of all, to hear about the product life cycle analysis, that which is about the basics of these techniques, which is an internationally established method for the evaluation of environmental impacts that occur through the life cycle of a product, service, or process in a transparent manner. Then uh, it was shown to them that uh, life cycle analysis uh, helps in assessing environmental impacts or decisions on the use of newly developed products, and then to compare all this with competing products, as well as to identify key stages uh, <clears throat> uh, that influence or uh, reduce the environmental impacts. Then, then it was also presented to them that the environment about the environmental management principles, that which are defined in the ISO standard 14,040. Uh, finally, uh, the participants of this workshop uh, were able to learn uh, about the use of LC analysis that is supported by the uh, European Commission and that the uh, results of LSA analysis are, of course, to the interest to the industrial sector as well and also the public sector. And then uh, they were also able to listen about the protection of, of the environment and learn about the rational use of resources, uh, which are actually of uh, great importance for any society. So, uh, this workshop uh, was organized by the Chamber of Commerce of Styria, is, come, is a region from the northeastern part of Slovenia, and it was held at the end of uh, the year 2019. And the, my colleagues, which are listed here, they are all <clears throat> they are all academicians coming either from the University of Maribor or University of Ljubljana, and let's say, read that, uh, let's say that research uh, that LC analysis and LC methodologies represent actually their uh, core uh, uh, core uh, research work. Uh, <clears throat> this uh, workshop. Uh, was intended from entrepreneurs interested in the circular economy, as well as entrepreneurs coming from other businesses, as well as for participants coming from the public sector. And as it is written here, uh, to summarize, the participants of this event were able to get knowledge on the characteristics of the circular economy, about the, then about the basics of LCA analysis and examples, about the ways to carry out and undertake LCA analysis in companies, as well as to learn about the complexity <coughs> of life cycle evaluation in energy conversion processes. This is about the first uh, expert workshop presented here. Then uh, the second expert workshop was much more devoted uh, or much more detailed to the circular economy. And here the participants were able to uh, learn about the differences between the circular economy projects and conventional development projects. Uh, that uh, about the differences which occur in several aspects about the uh, the complexity of, uh, of of technologies about then the investments as well as 
tell us about the economic indicators uh, when evaluating uh, the, uh, the develop uh, when doing the development of these uh, projects. Uh, they were also able to learn that uh, in regards. Uh, to, uh, in regards to planning processes in the field of circular economy, uh, it is necessary to introduce multi criteria decision making, uh, where we also take into account environmental and social impacts, which can be addressed by life cycle analysis and which was also presented today uh, in the beginning of uh, today's uh, session. Uh, <clears throat> And they were all, uh, and also the participants of this expert workshop were also able to hear how then to balance uh, between uh, different factors, uh, economic, environmental, and social while developing circular economy projects. So this project, uh, this expert workshop, I'm sorry, was held at the end of June this year. And and it was organized again by the Chamber of Commerce of Styria, and the co-organizer was the Competence Center on Circular Economy. And the presentations were given by LC experts coming from the Faculty of Chemistry and Chemical Technology at the University of Maribor. Uh, so, and uh, this the two-day workshop was intended for participants from companies, as written here, interested in the circular uh, economy, as well as those interested in new business opportunities. And the participants, to summarize, were able to get new knowledge about the concepts of circular economy and sustainable development, then about the methods for preliminary assessment of processes and technologies for the circular economy, about the LCA. Uh, analysis and then also about the uh, uh, evaluation of circular economy projects and in more detail also about the uh, energy issues and water issues in the in the development of processes as well as, well as about the sustainability of different processes. Uh, so both of these expert uh, workshops. Uh, provided the participants to get new knowledge and expertise on the use of product life cycle analysis. Um, and, and, and also the new knowledge was also offered to those coming from the public sector in order to obtain insight and experience on creating uh, uh, new policies. So uh, before uh, to, before completing my presentation, I would like also just here briefly mention that also other workshops on LCA were recently uh, conducted uh, in the, in Slovenia, and uh, this was organized under the umbrella either of the Slovenian Chamber or Commerce. And or occasionally these expert workshops on, on LC8 uh, are also given by the Slovenian National Building and Civil Engineering Institute, uh, which uh, conducts uh, fundamental and research, uh, fundamental and applied research work uh, in the field of uh, construction. So uh there is also an information provided regarding the education um on lca uh, in slovenia and this education is uh, mostly conducted at the faculty of chemistry and chemical technology of the university of maribor uh, and this education is conducted in all educational level uh actually in the graduate uh, in the bachelor and master program. There are two optional courses called environmental management and eco design and life cycle assessment. And then there is also the optional subject given in the doctoral study program uh, called life cycle assessment. Uh, this brings me to the end of my presentation and I thank you for your kind attention. Thank you.
Thank you very much as well uh, for this Slovenian experience uh, on uh, capacity building and training. And now we have a moment for Q&A session concerning last uh, four presentations. So if you have uh, any comments, uh, any questions to the presenters or topic, uh, please raise your hand and uh, uh, give them aloud or write on the chat. Uh, we have uh, one uh, questions, uh, one question already from Alessandro Dacomo. From, from Lombardy region. Uh, yes. Good morning, everybody. I'm the representative of Lombardy region, and I would like to thank very much um, Dr. Damaro for the presentation. It was quite really, really clear and interesting. And also, I would like to thank our technical assistant, assistants, uh, uh, Rina Consulting, uh, Federica and Giorgio in particular, because they identified this, this good practice which is, I, I think, quite interesting. Um, I would like to, to tell you something more. Uh, I think this is also a question for, uh, for Daniele, Dr. Damaro. Uh, I think this good practice is not, is not involving uh, at the moment uh, um, companies from Lombardy. So it's, it's a very interesting good practice, but just involving uh, companies from other regions. Uh, such as Tuscany, uh, Emilia Romagna, and Veneto, uh, if I'm, I, I'm not wrong. And so we hope we can try to apply this kind of model also in our region for our winners, perhaps in the future. I don't know. This is uh, just a, a hope we have. And so, can you confirm, uh, Dr. Damar, my, my statement concerning Lombardy? Uh, yes, uh, thank you for, for, for the question. Uh, as you mentioned, in, uh, in Lombardy right now, we don't have wineries that are the joint pro Viva program, but uh, we have got other, uh, all, 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 almost a lot of our other region uh, and that are participating such as Veneto, such as Emilia Romana, in particular Sicily, that are, there is a huge number of wineries participating. And um, this kind of, the number of wineries participating is, uh, is providing, um, is important and uh, and we believe that also the financial support uh, through different kind of uh, financial plan um, promote, that are promoted from European Commission and then are involved in so the the region can uh, can give us the possibility to enhance the number to increase the number of winners participating. In fact, uh, Piemonte region that was the one of the last that uh, gave uh, to the winners that are participating in some measure, uh, some measure about uh, about enhance uh, the rural development, uh, give more uh, give more uh, points in order to 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 better qualify them uh, in the in the list uh, of the wineries that uh, will participate and so basically it needs to something that needs also to come from uh, from the different region and also from the opinion of the of the different winners because right now uh, also these kind of things like uh, the, the support from the from the region and the support and also the idea of the wineries uh, to enhance the, the uh, environmental performance is increasing now the um, this, this kind of idea and so two different kind of aspects uh, that uh, are involved and can give us the possibility to in, to increase the number of wineries participating in the Viva program and also the wineries that are located in uh, Lombardy region. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much as well for the question and uh, the response. And now I address all the participants. Do we have some more questions concerning the presentation on good practices while capacity building and training and education is involved? Mm, uh, so remember, we have still uh, our chat uh, ongoing, so you could uh, put your questions there as well uh, and uh, follow them in the meantime. I mean, uh, uh, also the presenters to answer the questions as well. And now we are moving to the last point uh, of our uh, agenda for today. 
the last point is the presentation on two project, projects, High Five and Design for Climate. These are the projects uh, that are held on Wuch University of Technology and would be uh, presented by Krzysztof Jastrzemski. So I see the presentation is already on. Uh, the floor is yours. Hello. Uh, thank you for this uh, opportunity to present our projects. And as it is stated in the first slide, uh, today's presentation will be on the capacity building for the green competencies. But I will talk uh, on, in fact, uh, two uh, groups of uh, respondents, so teachers and students. Uh, and as it was mentioned, uh, this presentation is based on two. Erasmus Plus projects, they are both uh, dedicated to Action 2, so strategic partnership, but the High Five project is in the uh, field of higher education sector and design for climate, it's for the vocational education and uh, training sector. So I will start with the High Five project, which is the transdisciplinary methodology for integrated design in uh, higher education. In fact, it is the outer Authors uh, approach to uh, the design thinking methodology and also uh, application of various aspects like uh, PBL uh, or uh, also uh, integrated um, sustainable development. The partners of this project are uh, from the uh, Estonia, Greece, Bulgaria, and Portugal. And as it was mentioned, the coordinator of the project is uh, Lodz University of uh, Technology. Uh, in fact, uh, I've just come from uh, Portugal because we've got one of the events there dedicated for uh, checking our, our progress in integrated design. So this, uh, this integrated design, as I, as I mentioned, is our outdoor uh, approach to the uh, design thinking methodology but we wouldn't like to introduce uh, very much of an uh, environmentally friendly approach. That is why we introduced to the integrated design also the sustainable development and circular economy. In fact, so far we've got the four stages of integrated uh, design. So the discovery where the students are devoted to a fair understanding in general of the uh, problems, also those environmental ones. Definitions uh, uh, going strictly to uh, defining the, the problems that they would like to solve, ideation concerning uh, various uh, aspects that they can deal with the project and its implementation, at least in the form of uh, various prototypes. But also uh, further on, we would like to involve uh, many uh, business aspects of uh, uh, implementing the already prepared projects. And as uh, materials that will be or are already elaborated within this uh, project, we've got the materials direct directly for students from integrated designs. So the uh, various worksheets, various, um, uh, various uh, lectures, uh, which are the inspiring ones uh, for the students. We get the uh, project course sheets uh, for integrated design that can be used uh, for the sake of uh, introduction in, in the level of uh, university. We had, uh, in fact, a city game, uh, which was the, a way to introduce the sustainable development, creative thinking uh, in a very compact, but also very pleasant for students um, in a way. We've got uh, also the uh, possibilities to evaluate our uh, teamwork in um, integrated design. Um, for the sake of teachers, uh, it is the, um, the online course uh, which is uh, prepared for, uh, for teachers just to get to, uh, get to know about uh, integrated uh, design. And of course, after the project, we will also have a handbook of, uh, of good practices. And in fact, since I mentioned that uh, I'm already after the first summer school, so the first experience to uh, try the integrated design with students, I will just uh, share a bit of um, results of 
our students because we uh, end this summer school yesterday. Uh, it was the possibility to perform it in Aveiro uh, with uh, at least five students from each of the partner organizations. So we end up uh, in fact with 27 students uh, that were working uh, with the topic of integrated sustainability for a better world. And in fact, they provided various, um, uh, various solutions for various aspects of uh, sustainable development, circular economy and integrated design itself. So uh, one of the uh, students group, groups propose uh, an application that will serve for the sake of uh, identification of the waste and uh, the possibility, uh, possible ways of their, uh, possible ways of their um, further uh, recycling. And the second option, which was very nice, it's uh, that it had the possibility to call a, a meetup point for uh, people to collect uh, rubbish and uh, various uh, various waste from exact lo exact location. So introducing the uh, social aspects of it. Uh, we had also the group that was dealing with sustainable mobility, so mostly uh, bikes and integration of a uh, new application for the sake of uh, renting bikes, but not only normal ones, uh, but also uh, bikes for children, bikes uh, for uh, people with some additional, uh, additional uh, needs. We had a group dealing with the uh, um, green, uh, green tourism and uh, they stated that one of the important things that uh, they think are now lacking is that uh, the biggest uh, biggest apps like uh, like even booking they are not able uh, to to show the uh, sustainable green effect of their uh, uh, their partners so mostly hotels restaurants so we propose a, a way that can help to evaluate uh, such types of, uh, of uh, businesses in, in way of uh, sustain sustainability and in general the environmental uh, aspects. And the group devoted to sustainable food proposed a set of pictograms that were be used for the making uh, visible how much each product is affecting our uh, our planet so giving a possibility to um, to just learn more about each uh, each um, product and their uh, direct effect on on our uh, planet and the last one of course not least uh, was a team devoted to the green thinking and their application concerning like multifunctional combination of um, Introducing new uh, new approaches to uh, greenness in households, and uh, it has also some uh, some aspects of gamification because it enables some challenges between students on how green they can be, so how uh, how much they can reduce their, for example, electricity uptake, water uptake, and so on and so far. So. Those were directly the examples of students' work that they were elaborating within seven days of the summer school. But I would like to emphasize that uh, it was only the first summer school. We already are planning the second summer school for students, which uh, we will show, in fact, uh, already prepared materials because now it was like an iterative form of uh, introducing them. And we've got also some uh, creative boost events that are dedicated for general public. Uh, the second project, so Design for Climate, is addressing uh, directly the combination of design thinking uh, and uh, in green approach, uh, no waste uh, economy. Uh, one more time, the Lodz University of Technology is a project coordinator, but our partners here are from Portugal, Greece, Sweden and uh, Bulgaria. And this project is directly uh, devoted to development of green competencies because it's uh, mostly focused on the circularity of the economy and the environmental aspects and of course cooperation of uh, students and uh, team working for the sake of introduction of innovative uh, solutions.
the project goals are here uh, connected with the uh, vocational schools. So remember that all the uh, we are the university. We would like to affect the uh, um, students pupil pupils that are in age from 16 to 21, and they are uh, they uh, are affected by introducing uh, to their knowledge the idea of circular production. And for the sake of it, we will be uh, using the uh, design thinking uh, methodology and uh, uh, propose educational scenarios inspired by uh, real cases, of course, based on this uh, vocational uh, uh, field. So the key aspects of this project is not only this learning methodology, which is design thinking, it's also the possibility to learn uh, via the digital uh, tools. We propose an educational uh, platform D4C, which is dedicated in that case for students and uh, their work. Of course, we introduce some elements of gamification uh, just to better engage students in their uh, educational process. And uh, integration of the learning approaches uh, will be not only like the, the student's case, we are uh, wanting to prepare also the good practices gu guidelines for educate, educators, uh, just to give them the possibility also to involve uh, these um, collaborative tools and uh, the uh, schemes of the classes in their uh, everyday, uh, everyday life, everyday work. The concept concerning this project uh, was to uh, first analyze the educational requirements and educational basics that are already on the market. That is uh, why we were performing various questionnaires with students and teachers. Uh, creation of this uh, digital educational platform, we already have it like a, a pre, um, pre form of this, uh, this platform. Uh, further on, use of this platform for the sake of introduc introduction of learning activities for building circular economy skills and development, as I mentioned, of the supporting content for, for teachers. And as I mentioned, one of the aspects of our work was so far conducting of questionnaires. I will today tell only on the results of the uh, questionnaires performed among students and teachers in Poland. In fact, we, there was like, uh, 50, uh, 50 results of 50 teachers uh, questioned from the uh, um, sector of uh, of thoughts and, and uh, the neighborhoods of it and like 250 students. All the time I'm uh, talking about uh, vocational level. So as you can see, in fact, the sustainable development is a topic that is quite familiar, both for students and teachers. In case of teachers, it's like even like a 75%. Uh, and uh, I would even say that uh, the problem is mostly like uh, lacking the circular economy for students and both for students and teachers, um, the methodics for solving problems uh, in teams like design thinking or problem-based uh, based learning. But when you swap from not only being familiar with the concept by to how teachers really involve them in their classes, uh, it will be visible that although plenty of teachers uh, says that it's like even half of them that say they are losing, they are using creative methods of teaching, only like 25, maybe 30, uh, five percent of them use any aspect of uh, sustainable uh, development. In case of those problem-solving methodologies or circular economy itself, it's it's even uh, less percent. Uh, so the good thing is that although uh, on, during the classes maybe it's not stated like uh, um, it's it's directly the green economy and so on. Students says that uh, they are using various ways to reduce to wastes and reuse materials. So they have some competencies, although they may be not uh, sure uh, how they should be called. Uh, the students' experience of creative teaching is also very high. It's over half of the uh, half of the uh, students that experiences uh, experience it. 
probably we will uh, be mostly for facing these uh, students that lacking this innovative thinking and production design, for example, in case of design thinking methodology. To sum up the students' questionnaires, uh, the students uh, really like to have field activities and working on a specific projects dedicated to their interests. Uh, they think that it is uh, extremely hard for them to acquire the social competences during classes and they would like to um, uh, introduce also those concerning the entrepreneurial skills. Uh, the topics related to the green aspects of ecology, sustainable development, and the conscious uh, production are uh, the least frequently discussed on the vocational subjects. So it's also important that in vocational uh, schools they are discussing it on the, like a standard subject and, and not showing the business approach to it. And in case of teachers, the most important is they understand that it is very important to have like not only lectures, but also the uh, really classes con concerning the experiments concerning uh, some trips and visits and they even think that it will be the, the key point to uh, introduce the development of this sustainable green aspects uh, in their uh, in their teaching process and uh, the good thing is uh, that they already want to introduce the novelties in their curriculum so in their subjects so they are conducting already some reverse lessons, conducting uh, case studies or uh, other simulations. So we've got some, uh, some nice basics, but we will still want to improve it. So thank you for your attention. I saw some questions appearing already, but now I think I will be more, uh, more able to uh, discuss them. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, as far as I saw the questions concerned the previous presentations, but okay. uh, now, uh, now we have uh, time to ask them directly uh, to Krzysztof uh, concerning uh, the presentation we have uh, just witnessed. Uh, do we have some more questions? Uh, I'm really appreciating this uh, active approach towards learning and a lot of uh, engagements concerning the educational projects uh, you are participating in. So, my compliments for that. Uh, do we have uh, some questions uh, for Krzysztof? If not, thank you very much for this time. Uh, thank you very much uh, as well. Uh, I think the student perspective is quite important uh, for the future uh, of uh, LCA uh, inclusion within the decision making. And uh, we really appreciate uh, also these initiatives. Uh, thank you again. Uh, thank you to all the presenters for today. Before we get to conclusion, just one more information. Uh, perhaps uh, you were missing uh, today a good practice presentation from uh, Lotsky region, but it was presented yesterday. It was the presentation uh, of uh, Adriana Kozłowska uh, from Education Center from uh, Łódź University of Technology. Uh, presenting uh, several uh, several initiatives related uh, to our project, especially uh, to the capacity building, uh, training and education uh, within uh, LCA for regions. Uh, so uh, this would be also discussed uh, tomorrow. Uh, to sum up the presentation of today, we saw a very vast coverage of LCA capacity building and training. Uh, the instruments were addressed towards uh, public institutions like uh, procurement uh, initiatives or 
of the training uh, on uh, on uh, LCA uh, use for for the region authorities authorities and uh, representatives uh, concerning, uh, for example, construction and demolition waste. Uh, we had uh, also wide coverage for industrial sector. Uh, this is uh, for business models, for uh, carbon footprint uh, measuring, uh, and for LCE uh, itself uh, as well. We have also um, sectoral approach presented from uh, the vision, vision of uh, Daniele De Mario for vineyards. Uh, this is also an uh, important aspect. And of course, uh, we had students uh, and uh, perhaps also a more wider academic society uh, addressed with all these uh, instruments. Uh, as an example, we could uh, see uh, the, the students of uh, which University of Technology for this last presentation, or Kaunas uh, uh, University of Technology from Lithuania, where LCA uh, is used for both educational and research uh, purposes. Uh, so, thank you. Uh, very much for today and uh, before we get for the program tomorrow uh, my question is to Francesco would you like uh, to uh, sum up briefly our experiences of today uh, to... no, I, I think we're already uh, quite late and you already uh, summed up a very well key concept we can uh, uh, maybe uh, do like today and uh, start warming up tomorrow morning with uh, uh, visual representation of key concepts. Uh, thank you very much. We are awaiting uh, that uh, really because uh, it's uh, uh, really meaningful and insightful uh, summa summary uh, of uh, our exchange of experiences. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, so, my last task is to invite you for tomorrow. We meet uh, here, uh, again, the same link, uh, the same application, sometimes in Polish, but don't be scared. Uh, and uh, we meet from uh, 9 a.m. up till uh, 11 uh, 30 tomorrow to finish uh, the, the fifth uh, transnational learning journey on LCA for region. So thank you very much once again for all the presenters and all the participants.